Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how I upcycled this not so cute basket to make a really sweet Easter basket. I found this basket over at the second hand store for only two dollars. I already had the paint and I already had the fabric so now I have a super sweet Easter basket just in time for our Easter egg hunt. Now of course every basket is different and there's going to be different dimensions for every basket but maybe you can take the steps that I use to create my basket liner to maybe make one for yourself. So here is the basket. It wasn't a very cute color. So I chose this Serenity paint by Rust-Oleum and I decided to paint it. Everything that I use for this tutorial will be at the blog post, which will be linked below as well as the information icon and anything else that I mentioned, such as my calculator links and things like that will all be at the blog post. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the bottom of my basket. The diameter of the bottom of my basket, which is from side to side, was seven and a half inches, and the top was about nine and one quarter inches. I also measured the depth of my basket at six inches. Now my basket has um, is on a slant, so the top of my basket is larger. If you have a more cylindrical basket, um, then this will be a lot easier for you and you would just cut a rectangle pattern with a circle on the bottom but because mine is flared it's going to be a little different so the first thing i'm going to do is just draw out my pattern so i'm going to draw out my circle which is 7.5 inches and then i'm going to draw out the top of the basket which was nine and one quarter inches we're going to take those measurements and then add on your seam allowance. If you wanna do a half inch, then you will add an additional inch, but I'm going to be doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so I'm just going to add on a half an inch. So my measurement will be an eight inch diameter circle for the base of my basket, and then the top will be nine and three quarters in diameter. Then I'm gonna to go to my little calculator, which I will have that linked, and you just punch in the diameter. So I'm just gonna put in eight inches, and then it's gonna pop up for me, and it tells me that the circumference of my circle, which is all the way around it, is 25 inches, and then the circumference of the top of my basket is 30 inches. So I'm sort of going to be drawing a upside down trapezoid, and the, t the top of it will be 30 inches long, and then the bottom will be 25 inches long, and then the height is going to be that six inches of the basket. So this is the liner for just the basket, so if you didn't add anything else on. Of course, I'm going to be adding an overhang to my basket, so I'm gonna add on another three inches. So if you can tell by my pattern, I have the trapezoid and then I added another rectangle on top and that is going to be for my overhang. I'm going to draw this out on a big piece of paper, but I am going to be cutting it in half and then I'll just cut this pattern out on the fold of my fabric. And the only reason why I'm doing that is just because I want to conserve paper. But you could just create this whole entire pattern in one big piece of paper if you wanted to. And then I'm gonna cut out an eight inch in diameter piece of fabric that is going to be for the base of the basket lining. So here is my little pattern here, I drew it out. And then as you can see, it's exactly like I had in my little diagram. Um, from bottom to the first corner there is six inches, which is just the base of the actual basket. And then that three inches, like I said, is going to be for the overhang. So if you had a cylindrical basket that didn't have any flare like me, then you would just have one rectangle and you would have the depth of your basket plus whatever overhang you wanted to. If you wanted to have a bigger overhang, maybe you wanted to personalize it and put some vinyl lettering or some embroidering, then you would put that much overhang so you can account for that. So I'm just gonna cut this out. I'm using my adorable little pattern weights. If you haven't already seen the tutorial on how to make these donut clay pattern weights, I'll have that linked. So cute and adds a little bit of personality to your sewing space. But I've just cut out that fabric on the fold and then I cut out my circle, my eight inch diameter circle. 
and then I will also cut out a big long piece of bias binding. So it's just a two and a half inch strip of fabric that I'm going to be using to create the ties on my basket liner. So now we're gonna start sewing, finally. <laughs> All the math is done. So I'm just gonna take that piece of fabric, put it with the right sides together. Um, this fabric kinda had a right side, but you can't really tell. Like you just, you kinda need to see it in the light. So just put your right sides together and then we're gonna sew up the side and then we will put our circle in. Um, you can use some clips or pins or just, you know, free ball it, whatever you wanna do. I'm just going to um, slowly curve the fabric around the circle. It's not going to wanna do it just because you're putting a curved edge with a straight edge, but um, I find pinning it really helps. And then in the end, you can make sure that all your measurements were correct because if your measurements were not correct, this is when you will know. Okay, so now we're just going to sew all the way around and now you have your liner um, all pretty much, I mean, 75% done, anyways. <laughs> so now we're just going to fold it in half and then we're gonna slit down the sides. My basket has handles. Um, if you have a different type of handle, let's say you have um, one of those like, you know, laundry basket handles, then you might wanna slit it a couple times. Um, it all just depends on your basket, but of course I'm only gonna slit it on one side and then directly on the other side. And that seam, I put that um, in the center, so I didn't cut the seam or anything. So that's just on the one side, if that makes any sense. I don't even know. <laughs> and then I am just gonna take it for a little test run just to see how I like it and if I wanna cut my fabric a little bit more. I will be leaving some raw edges around where it's wrapping around the handle. Um, I don't mind that because once it gets tied up, you're not even gonna see them, but we are going to be covering the edges of the actual liner with this bias binding that I'm going to create now. So I just cut a strip of fabric that is two and a half inches wide, and it is the length of the side, one side of the basket. And then I added five inches on either side for the little ties, so an additional 10 inches on that measurement. So what I just did was fold in either side, a quarter of an inch, and I pressed that, and then I folded it again, and then that was my bias binding. I'm going to take one side of my liner, and I'm going to tuck the raw edge into my binding, and then I have that five inches on either side that I'm just going to let hang off, and that will be my little ties. So I'm just gonna clip those into place, and then you're just gonna start sewing from the end of your tie all the way down the side of your liner to the other end of your tie. And we did that for both sides, applying both sides of your ties. So after that, you can just put it on your basket and you're pretty much done. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know it can be a little bit confusing with the math. I am not a mathematician in any way and I usually get it wrong. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can apply it to some of your baskets. It doesn't have to be Easter, of course. It can be just a basket that's in your linen closet or one that's on display. You can really spruce up your baskets, you know, paint them. They don't have to be that ugly color color and you know <laughs> anyways i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and of course give me a big thumbs up share with your friends and subscribe if you're not already thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next tutorial bye guys